Hello, online students. Uh, hello, hello. I'll, I'll, I'll do the. Uh, uh, I got a couple videos I want to show. Just a little warm up, and then uh, and then we're gonna go through the assignment just a little bit. There's only seven questions, and it should be pretty easy. Um, but I wanna I wanna just go through it so the the online people have a little bit of lecture, um, and everybody kind of gets a uh, an idea what to do. So. Real quick, um, yesterday there was a rocket launch. Oh yeah. Um, we're gonna watch it on this guy's channel. He's all right. Like he's 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 okay. He's the dude that just talks about the uh, the um, rocket launches and stuff. Coach Grumbuck, just to make me feel better. Uh, Let's go. He talks about the rocket launches and stuff. Something interesting on his channel recently. He's been bringing his wife on the videos, um, and I don't know her name, but he refers to his lawyer wife. Um, so yeah. she's a lawyer, and she goes through um, SpaceX briefings, um, their legal briefings, their lawsuits, um, their attempts to get government contracts, and kind of goes through some of the details and the technical talk about that. Um, and so that's actually been pretty interesting. Um, but here, we're just going to watch the launch from yesterday. I'm going to switch to a different video and show you a fire that broke out after the launch, um, which was pretty cool. And then I'll show you a little, like, one-minute video about um, the next launch, which should be a full-size rocket. Um, they're going to go up 20 kilometers, which is like 12 miles, and then it's going to come back down and land. So uh, this is the launch from yesterday. It's going to take off from here. It's going to come over here and land. Um, so a short little hop, 150 meters in the air, uh, which is like 160-something yards, so about a football field and a half high. So you can see it light up. Their next you get lift off using a different lone engine, SN29. And this is going to be some footage cut in from SpaceX. So you can see that it's like a drone uh, that's recording. Here's footage from on the rocket. Then you're going to get some uh, footage from inside the rocket. You can see the nice mock diamonds in the, uh, the rocket plume. It comes down as all the, uh, the dust is kind of clearing out. And right about here, you'll see the landing legs pop out. There they are. You can see the little tiny landing legs there. <laughs> They're real short. And actually, the last time on the other rocket, they got crushed. Uh, like Two of them got crushed, and the rocket was like leaning. Um, this one looks like it might be leaning a little bit. but The clear view underneath the skirt, or the fact that we could kind of see touchdown through the smoke. But this flight looks so much better than the last. And Elon seemed to confirm that while SN6 did fly a similar hop to SN5, it was much smoother and a faster operation. All right. Expected that the next step. So the next step should be uh, instead of just like the fuel tanks, the next one will have a full nose cone on the top. It'll have uh, like aerodynamic wings on the side, and instead of one engine, it'll have all three engines mounted to it. Um, and so if we switch over to this one. Let me go, yeah, right here, boom. So they're going to switch over to the other camera. Yeah, there they go. And in just a second, you can see the fire. Um, there's nobody around here. For safety reasons, if this were to blow up, you would die. So there's nobody here. So they have an automated fire suppression system that's going to come on. I don't know if they're controlling it back at, at Mission Control or if it just sees the fire with heat sensors and tries to put it out. But you can see it come on here in a second, uh, and it's literally just going to spray the fire out like a like a fireman would. Uh, takes a second to get aimed in the right direction, which maybe makes it think makes me think that there's a human control in it, and it's not a like a computer system. But there you go. There was a small fire afterwards. Not a big deal. Um, it could just be like insulation wrapped around a pipe or some wiring or or some sort of mechanism that uh, that wasn't fully shielded, which will probably be shielded in the future. Um, but yeah, little fire that broke out, not a big deal. Um, and then real quick, this, nope, not this one in the middle here. This is a, uh, simulation. So this is a computer generated simulation of the next launch, which will be serial number eight. It'll have the nose cone, the two fins on top and the two fins on bottom. Um, and I'm gonna let it play and talk about it for a second. They'll have three engines going. And so this thing's going to take off pretty quick. Uh, oh, over here, yeah. this was Hoppy. This was the first one they built just to show that they could actually build something. Um, it's extremely ugly. 
Uh, it didn't work very well, and the motor almost burnt out, and it almost crashed, but it landed. And when it landed, its big old landing legs actually poked holes through the concrete landing pad. So they kind of had to redesign everything uh, and figure things out a little better. But right now, it's like uh, got a bunch of cameras and sensors and stuff mounted to it. So it's kind of just like a, a like a communication station for, for the launch site in a way. But it goes up. It's going to go up uh, 20 kilometers, so about 12 miles. Somebody looked it up earlier. Um, it's got all three engines on it. You can see the, the fins on it. And when it gets up to 20 kilometers, it's literally just going to shut the engines off. But instead of falling back down straight down, um, it's actually going to turn over and do this kind of like belly flop on its way down, um, which is how it's designed to come back into the atmosphere. Uh, this one doesn't have like heat shields on it or anything, but future ones will have heat shields. You can see it's going to go up pretty high. And then it's going to shut the engines off. Yeah, they got like the mock diamonds inside. Uh, that's what you get when you have like maximum, uh, I don't know, optimum like shape of your, your rocket engine and it's coming out very, very fast. So you can see it turns over and it's not gonna come up down like straight down. It's gonna come down on its side. And at the last minute, it's gonna turn the engines on and kind of swing back around and land straight down. Uh, and so this is a pretty crazy maneuver. I would be extremely surprised if they get it right the first time. Um, I bet this thing crashes the first time they try to do it, um, and they might have to do two or three attempts before they actually get it right and land it. So you can see it turn on. It flips all the way around a little bit, comes back towards the center, slowly comes down towards the landing pad, landing legs come out, and then it lands. Yeah, they're, they're probably going to crash the first couple. Um, in fact, if you go back to Falcon 9, which are really good at landing now, um, they have a whole montage of them crashing it over and over and over again because um, it's it's pretty hard to do. So um, that is... Can we watch that? Huh? Them crashing the Falcon Yeah. Uh, you know, if y'all want to, after everybody's done with the assignment, it's only seven questions, so, uh, you know. So let's get started on it. No, 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 wait a second. I just want to go through it real quick. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the questions they asked, but it's pretty easy, I think. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to assignments. So you should see the assignment today. It's Planets and Moons Practice Assessment. You should also still have the reading assigned. Close your Chromebook. So the reading will say astronomy. And if you click on that, it will take you to the first page. Um, it's going to ask a question about the size of the Earth compared to the sun. That's right here at the beginning of that first page. Um, the Earth is, no, the sun is one million times the volume of the Earth. Um, so that's a pretty nice round number, a million times bigger than the Earth is. Um, what else do they ask about? On this page down here, they ask about how the, the solar system is formed or the planets and are formed. Um, know that there's two answers that sound right. You want the answer that talks about the star being in the center. Um, both of them talk about the cloud of gas, and it starts to swirl, and it starts to solidify, and everything kind of comes together. But you need to remember that planets don't form on their own out in space. All the planets that we've ever seen are around a star. And so the way we describe the nebula hypothesis, the thing that's, that forms first in the middle is a star. And then the other portions of the gas um, go into orbit around the star and they start to form your planets. Um, so remember that the star is in the center. Um, let's see. It talks about the inner planets and the outer planets and has a couple questions about those. Um, just remember that your inner planets, which are on page two, are all your small, dense, rocky planets, and they're closer to the sun. Um, your outer planets, which are on page three, are your big, giant gas giants, which are less dense. They're, they're big gas clouds kind of in a way, um, and they're further out from the sun. Um, and I don't remember if there's anything else. Let me see. We can actually look at the questions. I don't think it'll show you the answer straight away. Oops. Yeah, hopefully not. I'll just turn it off real quick. No, 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 no. Don't look at that. Nobody look at the answers. Uh, so uh, hold on a second. Let me get another one. 
Look at and the then print view. There we go. So print view should not show the answers. Nice. Oh, you're cheating. Uh, oh. So they ask about the size of the sun. Um, the most widely accepted explanation for the origin of Earth's moon. Um, that was on the last page, page four. So if you come back over here. Nope, that's not it. There, yeah, no, is. stop that. Uh, that is all these kind of here. So if you go to number four here. It will talk about the the formation of the moon, and they tell you the name of the hypothesis there. Um, which one am I on here? Yes. Um, which statement does not correctly identify a planet in the solar system? This is just kind of talking about the inner planets versus the outer planets, um, which should be fairly easy. Um, a student argues that all planets in the solar system are equally capable of sustaining life. Is that true? No. 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 There's really only one. Um which answers best explain how most scientists think that planets form? We talked about that. That's that uh, nebular hypothesis theory. And so uh, two of these are going to talk about your rotating cloud, but you're looking for the one that has the star in the middle. Um, most scientists think that planets form when matter and accretionary. Uh, according to this hypothesis, the accretionary disk surrounds. That's kind of the same question. What's in the middle of the things that form the planets? It's got to be a star that's in the middle. Um, and then which answer best classifies planets of our solar system based on their physical char characteristics? you got to separate the inner planets from the outer planets. Um, and so that should be pretty easy, too. So if you have any questions, email me, especially people online at home. Um, and, uh, yeah, I will post this video uh, as soon as it gets uploaded to YouTube. I will post a link on Google Classroom. Yeah, if you want to say bye, wave bye to the class. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. Bye. Yeah, we miss y'all, so y'all come back to no, school soon. No, 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 no. <laughs>